Hey everyone, welcome back to That's Effin Rich. So a lot of you may not know, but I'm actually writing my own book. Uh, you can actually find the first chapter of it in the description below. And I do intend to get published one these days, but I've been writing for quite a long time, and during this time of writing I've learned quite a number of things. And so what I really wanted to do was not the typical review of like Scarlet Nexus this week, but I really just wanted to critique its story. And not the whole story, just like the opening hours of the story, because the opening hours of, of any story can be instrumental for getting the reader or the viewer or whatever into that game or into that book. And that's why I wanted to critique it, <laughs> to really you know, see how good it was. Because I've had a lot of things about Scarlet Nexus. It's been getting kind of middling reviews. I've actually played it myself, uh, the first couple of hours at least. And so I really just wanted to react to the game, to like the story and just give you my raw opinion on the story for this game. So at the beginning of the game, you get to start off choosing between these two characters. I have played a little bit with Yuito, the main character here. I haven't actually started the game as the girl character yet. Now their paths, from what the bit I have played, their paths do cross and I will get more into this later about if I feel this should have been the case or not. But let's 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 just get it get into this. You have to live no matter what <laughs> You have to live, no matter what. <laughs> what that kind of tells me about <laughs> that immediate, like, you have to live, no matter what. What that kind of tells me about this game is that the opening is likely going to be boring. Or the opening hours are going to be slow. It, usually, when a story gives you that kind of prologue like that, usually it's a lot longer, usually it's not just a one-liner. But when it gives you that kind of prologue, it, it it's telling you that, oh, hey... There is a reason you want to stick around, but uh, yeah, it, it might be a bit slow at first. Personally, I I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes these can be okay, but usually I do not like these kind of these kind of like little prologue bit, bits like that. That's not saying it's bad. It's just a very subjective thing. feels like <sighs> good seems like you're okay this aptitude test will determine your platoon assignment do your best yes sir so the opening cutscene is interesting um i think it does give a lot of intrigue into what you know, these powers are, exactly how we're going to be using them. I like it that it also shows that our main character is not your typical rank and file. Like, he he was the only one in that test to remain standing after that happened. Though he still gets put in the same squad as, like, one of the other, the other <laughs> character who wasn't wearing a helmet there. I think, obviously, as long as it, it, the powers do get explained later on and we get to see things, but I think that was kind of intriguing, that first cutscene. Okay, that ends your training. You're an official member of the OSF from tomorrow. Okay, so I just want to mention here that uh, doing an examination arc, uh, like an examination bit like that, and having that as like, oh, this is, you know, your entrance exam, your aptitude exam, it, to get into the OSF like that, that's a perfect opportunity to really go into what the powers are in this and kind of explain stuff in a bit more detail, show a bit of variety of, like, different characters and their powers. Um... The game does not do that. The story does not do that here. 
I know as you play the game, you get into more, uh, you get more characters and they have different powers and it kind of explains to you what their powers are there. But yeah, it, it, this definitely feels like a prioritization over the gameplay in, uh, in terms uh, and a sort of detriment to the story because of it. I, I don't know. I, it depends what they could have done there, but I just definitely feel that that was a real missed opportunity to have to to explore more of this world more of the powers that they use in this world and get more of an understanding behind it other than just going uh oh yeah the main character can use telekinesis i get they want to like get you into the powers bit by bit by bit but currently even as a player i find it just a little bit underwhelming it's like okay i can do telekinesis yeah okay well why why can I do telekinesis? Why why can I do telekinesis and, and someone else can create fire, you know? I, I definitely I definitely think they could have done more there. Hey Yuito, how was the test? Nagi, how did it go? A side note, this this game is literally a glorified visual novel. Uh, all the cutscenes are kind of done in this style, and I <laughs> I know that I know we're talking about the story here. I definitely think this is just a detriment to the game in general. The fact that they don't have proper cutscenes, they just do it like like this. It is better than at than like sort of just having a normal normal visual novel, but I don't know. Personal preference, I don't really like the cutscenes, uh, the way they're done. On the test, I'd say that I did kind of pretty good. Pretty good. You fell kind over. Of good or pretty good. We were looking rough when the SAS cable connected. Didn't I tell you? I was saved by an OSF soldier when I was a kid. So I wanted to be one as well. But... But what? Lately, I've been wondering if that's it. The end of my goal. I'm here today because someone saved me. So... I'm wondering if there is a better way to save more people's lives. Yuito was saved by an OSF when he was a kid, and that's why he became an OSF soldier, why he wanted to, in turn, save people himself. It's not a bad reason to become an OSF, right? Usually, when we have main characters, their reasoning, their resolve behind things is one of the things that like really attaches us to that character makes us interested in that character and pushes that character forward throughout the story this uh him being saved by someone is kind of a weak excuse and as a result his yuito's character needs to stand out more now having played through a bit of the game i can say that i think this was okay Obviously, you would prefer there to be, like, some big, epic reason why the main character wants to be an OSF soldier. Something that is linked in with the main plot. That would be the kind of ideal reason here. But there are little, like, questions that pop up uh, from the person who, sa who saved him when he was a kid. And things like that that really kind of stand out. And Yuito, is, as we'll find out, is... Uh, a pretty confident hero. I actually quite like his character. He is fairly pure of heart, not to the extent that like maybe Goku is or something like that, but he is someone who is sure of himself and sure of his ideals. And that makes him a compelling main character. So I, what I said before about his character needs to needs to stand out, needs to be strong on its own, that do, they do do that. His character does 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 do that, and it does work out in this case but i just wanted to point out that kind of missed opportunity here of of the fact that they could have had a bigger impact something bigger happen when he was a child something that links into the main story and links him into the main story i don't think and that would have immediately made the us as the the player more interested in this game's world and more invested in finding out what is going to happen in this game's world. So you're going to report to Sumeragi Tomb later? I hate telling the ancestors every little thing. So annoying. <laughs> well, it's not just that. The Sumeragi Tomb is collaborating with Baki right now. What? Sumeragi Tomb is your family grave. I know it's a tourist spot, but they do things like that? I heard it's happening more and more. It's something my father decided on. Oh, right. 
I have to send a message to my dad and brother. Your father won't reply anyway. I know he didn't want you to join the OSF, but man, that's cold. He's always smiling when he's at the council. It's like he's not even two-faced, but three-faced. I mean, he's a politician after all. Anyways, I only send him simple messages. Oh, there's already a reply from my brother. What does it say? Good work. You pushed through. A direct compliment from Chief... What I actually do have to compliment the story here, the dialogue here. What we've just learned that, like, that we've just learned that Yuto's family is very, very important. They've added things like Baki, which is this, like, little, kind of fun little, I don't know, mascot thing in into the game, uh, which they've kind of indirectly sort of introduced at this point. And we get to see more and more with Yuto and his... Um, friendship with Nagi at this point and none of this information uh has come off like as just like an info dump you know it, it's all come off pretty natural by the characters and I, I do have to say this is probably one of the game's strengths maybe one of the strengths of actually having a visual novel style uh like look like this usually when you have proper inbuilt cutscenes you don't get this kind of like dialogue you know this amount of dialogue back and forth between the characters and uh this is definitely one of the strengths that comes from having this kind of cutscene and, and this kind of dialogue here i can't believe your family grave is a tourist spot you sure are an elite my dad and brother are but i'm not it's like one of those grand families your father is the chairman and your brother is chief of the osf plus you're descended from yakumo sumeragi our founding father He's the hero who saved humanity from the spring of extinction. I wonder what he looked like. Maybe he looked like you. He is your ancestor. He's my ancestor, but that- Okay. I know I was just praising it a moment ago <laughs> about being able to give all of this information without it feeling like an info dump. Well, I've completely taken that praise back now. <laughs> could, like, could this be any more info dumpy right now would these two friends really have a talk like this i i know they want to get this information across but they already got this information across basically a moment ago they didn't need to go this extra step and since this is a, this is a game yuito being like again the descendant of this person they could have easily had that in game like you go around you pick up a flyer and it has it on the flyer. Maybe Yuito internally monologues it. This isn't something that kind of, you know, would happen between two friends like this. Uh, yeah, so, okay. Maybe the game is not quite as good at delivering that kind of information naturally as I maybe first assumed it was. The only record of him is in that mask. Even if they say he's my ancestor, how could I be sure? Okay, another side note. I do get that they are probably saying this to foreshadow something. They're, they're introducing this founder. They're saying his face was covered because of an injury, etc. There's going to be a twist behind it later. You can all but guarantee that. But it is done very, very unnaturally. Uh, I really, really dislike the way this foreshadowing here is done. Because uh, first of all, it, it's like these friends are talking about things that they wouldn't normally talk about. It, it should be something that's, that's done more naturally. You know, the founder should be brought up more naturally than just like, oh, I'm going to go to my grave and talk about the founder. Uh, yeah, it's just really, really poorly done here. And the the cool thing, like the cool thing if you do put in the founder more naturally and, and show him to the players kind of more in a more natural way within the story, it makes that eventual twist that much more impactful rather than, you know, the, the two main characters going, oh yes, he wears a mask because he hurt his face for some reason. So now we're immediately thinking, okay, why is he hiding his face? What does this mean? You know, and as we see like, probably about five minutes from now, there's going to be a character who ju looks just like the character who saved Yuito when he was a kid. And, I don't know, maybe the, maybe the founder's going to look like Yuito. I don't know. I haven't played more than five hours of this game, but it immediately lessens... Like, when we do get to this twist, it will lessen 
whatever the twist is. Huh? Others? An other alert? But today's forecast said the threat level here was zero. I don't know if it's ever explained, at least within the story, what the others are, or why they look like a bouquet of flowers. I mean, not all of them look like a bouquet of flowers, but like, you get the point, right? Why do they look like what they look like? What are they? I don't know if this is going to be a twist later on down the line, but I think this is fundamentally something that should be explained to the player, you know, or if you're reading this story to the reader, near the beginning. Uh, you don't have to explain everything about the others, but at least explain what we know, what the people of this universe know about these enemies. And it might be explained in like, I don't know, the start menu, you know, like codec card things or whatever there, but that doesn't count. Like, most players are not going to read that. <laughs> Septentrion, Karn, Travers, and Fubuki Spring. Karn Regiment, Fubuki Regiment, Plan A, roll out. Civilians, head to the shelter. Huh? Wow. Hey, Yuito, we have to get to the shelter too. We're not real soldiers yet. Uh, yeah. The other was defeated with one blow. Septentrion First Class. Brain Eater Major General Karin Travers is amazing. Whoa. Hyper velocity evasion into an electric blast? Karin Travers is the only one who can use that many powers. Yeah. Would have been nice if we could have seen it. I mean, they were right there. <laughs> You know, again, one of the issues with this visual no novel style is that you don't get to see, like, action very well. And, again, um, showing, like, showing the most powerful character very early on is a pretty standard trope within anime. And, you know, this is an anime-style game. But usually when we see that most powerful character very early on, it's done to give us a... to show us a gap be between the strength of the main character and the strength of the strongest. And it shows them, oh, this is what they are going to be working towards. But this doesn't happen here. They they literally ran away from him immediately. We didn't get to see what he can do. And so far we haven't really been able to see, I guess we've been able to see what the main character can do in gameplay, but not really in a cutscene. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess that's what they were trying to set up here, but then they didn't do it, which just, Kind of confuses me. Instead they have, oh, they show him on TV screen and it goes, oh yes, he defeated it with one blow. <laughs> Major freezes the other without hesitation. Whoa, an other like that is nothing against a Septentrion class. This is the first time we've seen other powers other than the telekinesis from the main character. And this Septarian class, I know I'm being very picky here, but it, it, it is importance for just immersion within the story we see his ice and this ice power is not like it's not a lot of ice right yet i guess we're assuming it is defeating the creature in a single hit later on we see the main character kind of get fire power from or be able to use someone else's fire power so when he does his sword swing he does like a big of fire and yet which is definitely more ice than spring's power so immediately we're like, okay, well, how are we comparing this? How, what is determining what power is stronger and what power is weaker here? That's just one thing I kind of like wanted to point out here because it's a bit, a bit off. I think if we, if we had seen the ice be bigger, maybe completely envelop the enemy and encase them in ice and then have it shatter, that would have been more interesting and showed, shown us, okay, yes, he can create a lot of ice, and it's very powerful ice. But I think the whole reason that 
we just didn't see this is because this is like a visual novel. This is like essentially a low budget cutscene, and it's already having a detrimental impact on the story. It's not safe here. Get to a shelter. Y yes, sir. Be careful. There are more others. Can you keep fighting? <laughs> You a civilian? Huh? It's her. You have to live. No matter what. You're OSF? Oh. No, I'm a cadet. I see. Either way, our goal is the same. We now see the whole point of that little prologue thing that we had of you must live no matter what, right? And we're introduced to this character who looks exactly the same. As we will find out later, she has no idea about, you know, this is the first time she has met. This is pretty good, actually. It Because it immediately makes us more interested in this character. Like, why does she look the same as the person from Naoto's past? And it brings up the past more about as well with us going, well, why why is there someone from Naoto's past that, look, that looks the same? Why did she tell him that he that he needs to live? What was the thing that he that she gave him that's on his ear? So I do actually like this. Um, what I have played within the first five, six hours of this game, this other character so far has not had a major impact. Now, maybe there, and I say a major impact, has not had like a major impact on Naoto, right? Like, she's not been in the story all that much other than a couple of sections where they cross paths. And, I don't know, maybe this is just the time to bring up the fact that this game has two stories. I feel like you're supposed to play Naoto's story and not understand anything that's going on. And then some at some point towards the end of Naoto's story you'll get all of the answers. And again, I haven't played the game, this is just what I'm guessing. And then you get to play through the game again with this person, the girl's story. And you'll have all the answers, you'll understand all the events. I very much dislike this way of storytelling. <laughs> there's there's a couple of anime that, that do this um, that are all very not good. For example, Ashura Crying was one of them. Uh, you don't find out what happens exactly until the end of the first season. And yeah, re-watching the first season when I know what is going on made it so much more interesting. I can't remember the name of the other anime. I will put it up on screen here. But this is another anime where you don't learn anything about what's going on until about three episodes into season two. And it would have just made the anime so much better if you just knew what was going on. Because when you don't know what's going on, you can't have stakes. You can't like, you can have stakes, but you can't have, like... The stakes can never be as big or as impactful as when you do know what's going on. It's like, imagine if Dragon Ball Z starts and you're immediately in the freezer fight where Goku is about to go Super Saiyan, right? And it's second, third episode of the show, he goes Super Saiyan and fights, freeze, fights Freezer. But because you've not never had any of this backplot or foreshadowing, right? You've never had... Vegeta bring up a Super Saiyan. You've never had Vegeta struggle to become a Super Saiyan. You've never been told that Frieza destroyed all of the Saiyans because he feared one of them becoming a Super Saiyan. It just, it, it makes that, the it makes Goku becoming a Super Saiyan so much less impactful because we've never had any of that build up to it. And I feel like this is what happens a lot in this game where we have all these things happening for Yuto, and he just doesn't have any idea. We as the player don't have any idea about what is going on, and things are so much less impactful for it. 
And I think the game does this on purpose because it gives you this second character to play through the game when you will know what's happening. And I just I think that's a bad way of doing it. I think that's just a bad way of telling the story. Again, this is subjective. But based on like the score that these animes have gotten and this game has gotten in the way that they tell the story in this fashion, I think it's not just me. Kasane, I saved that boy. Nagi! You're okay. Yeah, Naomi saved me. Man, I must look like an idiot. I'm just glad you're not hurt. Thanks, sis. Oh, you two are sisters? Yeah, they're both OSF cadets like us. Let me introduce myself. I'm Nagi Carmen. This is Yuito Sumeragi. I'm Naomi. Naomi Randall. This is my younger sister, Kasane Randall. So it was you making all that trouble. Alrighty, alrighty, that's enough filming for today. I'm Luca Travers. So this is another negative of this game, in that we are just introduced to Kasane and Naomi, and before we've even learned anything about them, we're suddenly introduced to two more characters. Um, you know, the Captain Girl, what's her name, Springs, and, and this boy. And he's not even a boy, right? I think there's something to do with, like, the fact that their looks, their age, don't matter so much, or they can look different because of these powers. I'm not sure it's not explained properly. This is one of the big things I think this game has an issue with, of just introducing too many characters too fast. I think Naoto and Nagi, at the beginning, were fine. And then if we'd been introduced to Naomi and Kasane and we'd had a bit of time to get to know them before these characters came in, it would have been okay. But I feel there's like so many characters in this game that we get introduced to so fast in the first like, you know, hour or two of this game. And as a result, we just get overwhelmed. And it's like, okay, who are these characters? Am I supposed to remember this character? What what does this character do again? What was his rank again? You know what I mean? Yeah, so that that's just, I, I guess, one of the negatives that I kind of have to mention on this uh, this game. And I think there's maybe, maybe a little too many characters that look young. Again, I think it was done... I think they did explain that, you know, characters can look young because of the psychic powers and everything that they're using, but, you know, if it's not going to have a big impact on the story, I or, or they're, if they're not going to explain a good enough reason for it, then I'm, I'm, I, I, it kind of takes me out of the immersion of the story. I feel like, oh, they've just made these characters childlike because that is, like, an anime trope. What's that? Oh, casualties from the battle. Two OSF troopers on guard duty were killed. I think it's censored, but it's best not to look too close. Huh? Why? Because others eat human brains. Yes. Looking at headless bodies can have negative lasting effects on your mental health. Oh, I just imagined it. They should teleport or report. So this is a this is actually a, a pretty cool little element here. Kind of reminds me of a bit of psychopaths, right? Where we're in this future and everyone is like connected and as a result there are things that are censored that we don't that you know we're not allowed to see because it would affect our mental health uh which is it's pretty cool as well we also get told here that the others eat brains are we going to get any more information on that probably not but i do like the censorship here it does it is a foreshadow for some stuff later on that i've kind of, kind of recently gotten up to in the game but at the same time i don't think it's enough this is like the only instance really where something like this comes up and i think having something more come up later in the story would have been good but that just wasn't wasn't done here i'm sure you know but one person can only use one type of power but each kind of power has peculiarities and aptitude just as there are types of powers each person has strengths and weaknesses. To use them in combat, we must rely on devices to lessen the stress on the brain. That's why things that can be accomplished without powers, or things with low priority, are done manually. 
Right, sorry. Now then, I'll be going. Okay, so our brief introduction to powers. But why? Why do we get these powers? And I okay, so the things that they they're you know that we use are helping us control them, but why? Like how did we get these powers? Are they technology based? Yeah, you know, there, there's so much that just isn't explained. <laughs> You got a big head for a cadet. Huh? What did you say? All right, everyone, don't fight. I'm Kyoka Eden of the 1st Regiment, 8th Company. You're Cadet Yuito Sumaragi and Cadet Nagi Carmen, right? Chief Kaito Sumaragi has asked to see both of you. Hurry to the Chief's office. Be ready for a lecture. You did a good thing, but it's important to follow the rules as a member of the OSF. Good luck. That... Th that's where you're going to have the title screen. That's where you're going to have the title screen. <laughs> it kind of... There's so many characters that are either shown or introduced in that first bit. It kind of makes me feel like it, it's your first day at work and, you know, your manager is showing you to, like, all the different people on, on like, the floor, all the different people you're going to be working with, and you know you're never going to remember any of their names. And then at the end of the tour, it's like, welcome to, you know, whatever company. And that's kind of what this feels like right now. It's best to be familiar with the type of powers in your platoon. For example... My power is electrokinesis. All right, you first, Hanabi. Understood. I'm Hanabi Ichijo. My power is pyrokinesis. Happy to be here. Nagi Carmen. My power is air manipulation. I'm Yuito Sumeragi. My power is psychokinesis. Okay, all you babies of the 567th class. I'm Kagero Dawn, the late blooming genius. I'm Wataru Frazier. My power is reading thoughts, basically telepathy. Tsukumi Nazar. My power is clairvoyance. We'll start with guard duty as your hands-on training. We'll go in two-man teams. Nagi's with me, Kagura with Sugumi, and Hanabi with Yuito. Connect your SAS with each other. Get ready and reconvene at the entrance to Kikuchiba in one hour. That is all. Dismissed. What's that drone doing? Damn, they found... Yuito! Hanabi! Look alive! All of you, stay back or you'll get hurt. Okay, so one question I have, right, about this mission is, like, why is this part of the city infested with others? Is, like, are other attacks common? Why is there no one living in this part of the city? Because it, it seems connected, right, to the rest of the city. So do, do the others just turn up at random parts of the city and and take over it? There, there's There's levels later on where we see kind of destroyed highways and it's like with the level of technology that they have in this in this in this world you you wouldn't think that the highway would just be left unused right so it's like it, it begs the question of like just how serious is this other threat it, it's apparently not serious enough that people can just walk around the city like willy-nilly as, as normal but it's apparently so serious as well that they can't make use of, like, highways and entire sections of the city because of the others. And I just want to know why. Like, I just want to know more about it. Like, it, are there, like, nests of others? Like, 
do they congregate in areas and that's why they can't use these parts of the city? I mean, we haven't seen any reason why they're like, we haven't seen any others that they can't beat yet, right? So you would think that they would just be able to take out the others and then reuse the highway, but... <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just when you dig a little deeper, it just doesn't make a load of sense. And that's what this game has kind of felt like to me so far, is that it, it it's it's something which is seems like it's very deep on the outside, but it's actually just a shallow pond. I didn't just say that for the press. You two really did a great job. I think we'll, we'll we will leave it here for now in terms of the story. I've gotten through an hour of the game, which is kind of what I was aiming for to get through. This is like really, I think, the point at which the player would make a decision about whether they want to kind of keep playing this game, right? And so far I would say my experiences with the story of this game have been a lot more negative than positive. There are some interesting things you can see running around the city here that there are a lot of cameras everywhere. Now there is a reason for this and this is a bit of foreshadowing for later on, which is, it's a, you know, a nice touch. But if you think back to what we have experienced in this first hour, we have learnt so very little about this world. You know, what I said before about it being just a shallow pond. There has been almost no depth to what we've learnt about this world. It's all just been very shallow. We haven't gotten any reasons for things happening. We've been introduced to more characters than I can count on both my hands in an hour. In fact, it was mo like in fact most of it was in the first half an hour. <sighs> the only the only question, the only like thing we have that I guess pulls us forward because because of what we have learned so far, I can't even be sure in this game if it is going to tell us what the others are. You know, are they saving that for like a final reveal at the end? I don't know. I cannot be sure. The only question that is pushing me forward in this game so far is what, like, why does, why did that person at the beginning look like Kasane? The person that saved Yuito when he was a kid. That is the only question that is pushing you forward and it's not a big one, right? The, the main thing the game should be setting up at the moment is the other threat. Like, how much of a threat are the others? Because people seem to be living pretty normal lives, you know? Is this a threat that's going to grow? Is it something which we can just, like, leave as is? You know, we know nothing about them. And even, like, five hours into the game of what I've played up to, we still know nothing about it. And this is just... This is a massive, massive no-no. For this game's story, right? This is this other threat is like the big difference in this story compared to like other stories. Same with the powers that the main characters have. The game should, the story should be explaining this. It should be setting up like just what the, the powers ha like are, just what they mean to us. How are they like how they're used in everyday life? If if do normal people have these powers? Do you need the you know? the machines to actually use these powers and you know the other threat like again how much of a threat are they like why do they suddenly appear how much of a threat are they outside the world outside the city is is it just inside the city that is safe there's all these things that we just don't know that just don't get explained <sighs> i think i think scarlet nexus has some good elements to it it is, again, I haven't finished the story, but based on the first hour that we've just seen here and the first couple of hours that I've played not on this video, I think the story has potential, but it's just really squandered, you know? It feels like, it feels like this is a, a visual novel writer that has written this. And if you if you have played a visual novel, it is very very dialogue heavy. Usually to the point where they just reiterate the same information kind of again and again and again and again and again, and really kind of explain get through things like very slowly. 
again, I, I, I'm not a massive visual novel person, so I can't say for sure, but that has been my experience of visual novels so far. And this game, it really feels like it was a visual novelist that wrote this game. Whereas it should have been someone who specializes in fantasy and sci-fi. Because I just, I, you know, the way the storytelling in this game is, I wouldn't go far to say it's abysmal, but it's pretty poor. But the game does have an interesting premise and interesting ideas that could elevate it to be something special and something memorable. But it doesn't, it, it doesn't stand on any of its strengths. <laughs> And it kills me. As a writer myself, this kills me. It really, it, it pains me physically to watch through this, to know that there, there are things that could have been done that just weren't done that would have made this so much better. And again, I think, this, I think the story in this game has the potential to be really, really good. But it just isn't. <laughs> <sighs> and uh, and like even on a on a on like a, and just briefly touching on the game right even on a gameplay side what have we had we've had our entrance exam we've had running around the streets and then we've had this first mission that you've done that you've done with your squad is this a ps3 game is this a ps2 game i think we've we've established by now that you know, gamers need to bring forward bring forward some of their best stuff at the beginning. You know, we need to have this interest in mission at the beginning, not just training mission. Uh, this is this is a tr I think this is a bit of a JRPG trope. You know, where you start off in a small village and then you fight and you're fighting slimes and then eventually you you build up and you're fighting God by the end of the game. And I think this is really taken from that JRPG RPG trope where. You, you know, you start off small, you're starting off with like training missions and then you work your way up. But in this day and age, I think that trope, that way of doing things is a bit outdated. And really what, what this, this game could have done with is something really flashy, something really interesting as a mission early on in the first hour of this game. And it just, it doesn't, doesn't have that. Um, but yeah, that has been... <laughs> my you know a writer's impression of the story of scarlet nexus i hope you enjoyed that video let me know if you enjoyed this kind of video or if you thought it was in any way informative at all and again as a reminder my first chapter of my book is in the description below you can if, if you think that my uh my critique is not worthy enough go and check out the first chapter of my book and tell me if you think that is any better and you know feel free to comment it and if you like the book, give it an upvote. This has been That's Effin' Rich. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.